Good morning. This is Dr. Bavard here at 24.7 WCUW with WCUW Live. Well, we'll bring you this show here today. That was beautiful. I, I love when, um, when we change over and we're listening to the music. Unfortunately, there's certain things that we cannot play over on video stream that we play over on uh, audio stream on the audio stream on our radio station. We're able to we we have the license, we have the permits, we have everything necessary to play music, and you hear good music all day long. And between nine o'clock and twelve is when we have our our WCUW um, uh, gospel, and you listen to beautiful gospel music all morning, uh, starting at nine o'clock, and it moves on to through the day until about 12 until well until we start this show here which is at 11 o'clock and I don't want to be amiss by telling you that you 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 have the uh, pleasure of listening to Reverend Dr. Um, Billy Cashwell from the um, Highway Shepherd and he comes on at 10 10 10 10 every morning and he's like clockwork and he's a um, used by God beautifully. Uh, if you heard the sermon today, uh, he was speaking, uh, where is he? Uh, where's the Jew? Where's the king of the Jews? Where is he? And it was a, a beautiful um, uh, sermon that I heard Billy bring, uh, uh, brother, uh, brother Cashwell bring uh, to us uh, in the past. And so it's, it's a pleasure to have him here with us and have him um, uh, communicate with us and uh, have that program available for you. Um, also, today being um, Good Friday, it's a holiday uh, to most of us. Um, <clears throat> so it's a it's a warm day that we're a, um, a warmly received day here at twenty four point seven WCUW. Oh, I want to give you a number a number to call us here today if you want to do a shout out. You want to do a shout out to a family member? Call us at four one three three one five eight nine nine two, and and that's if uh, uh, you like to just give a prayer, give a howdy do, uh, uh, or or just say something to um, um, a family member. Uh, uh, it's always a welcome, always something to just say hi to how um, how your family members are doing because you know we don't get a chance to see or say anything. And if you want to just uh, a prayer, uh, you want to get on and, and, and just uh, share a prayer with someone, um, feel free, feel free to um, call us back and uh, we'll call that number 413-315-8992 and 413-315-8993. You're listening to... Uh, 24.7 WCUW. We'll be right back after this message. This is why you work so hard to pay the mortgage. Because home is more than four walls and a roof. It's that porch swing on a summer night. It's pajamas with feet and everybody over for Sunday dinner. And that old stuffed chair in the living room you just can't get rid of. This is why you work a second job. This is why you learn to fix things yourself so you can save on repairs. Because home is your place, your memories, your family sleeping in their own beds at night. And that is why we want to help. We are making home affordable, a free government resource that can make paying the mortgage easier. And now even more options are available. Call 888-995-HOPE today. That's 888-995-HOPE. Or visit makinghomeaffordable.gov. Good night, Mama. This is why. Brought to you by the U.S. Treasury, HUD, and the Ad Council. When is the best time to talk to your family about staying in touch during a disaster? When hurricane winds are gusting? When floodwaters reach your door? Or a blizzard blocks all the roads? is the best time perhaps today during a disaster 
you may not be able to stay in touch with your family or friends as easily as you think. And it's not always as simple as using your cell phone. That's why now is the time to take action. Go to nyc.gov slash readyny or call 311 and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by New York City Emergency Management and the Ad Council. Dave, what are you doing? Just sending a gift to Dave2037. Who? Me in the future. I save a little money from every paycheck for Dave2037 so he can buy anti-gravity boots or a hologram Doberman. What are you getting Steve2037? Steve2037 will be just fine. Okay, but don't expect to borrow my anti-gravity boots. Save something for the future. Put away a few bucks. Feel like a million bucks. For free ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. That's feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. Yeah, um, as we know today, today is um, uh, Friday, uh, Good Friday, they call it, and uh, we celebrate, we begin to celebrate the, the, um, the walk to the cross. Uh, I first want to start uh, our, our show as, you know, the same way we always start our show, uh, with prayer, and uh, I, I would be admissed if... Um, for any reason, if I were to um, uh, forget to do prayer, um, I know I would get phone calls from everybody out and about saying, Bishop, we didn't get a phone. We didn't get a, we didn't get prayer. So let us let us begin in prayer here today. Dear merciful, most precious Savior, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, O God, for the work on the cross. We thank you for your Son that you sent to us. <clears throat> for if it was not for the Lord who was on our side, when strong men, God bless me, if it was not for the Lord who was on our side, when strong men had come up against us, what would we do? You are our anchor. You are our rock. You are our strength. In you, O oh God, we see guidance and we see direction. And we thank you for that. We ask, O oh God, that today be a day of protection. As we go about our day today, blessing you for what you have done for us. Your unselfishness of going to the cross and giving your life for your life, we thank you. We thank you. Oh, if I had a thousand tongues, I couldn't thank you enough for all that you have done for me. As I said, when strong men have come up against us, when we have found ourselves in circumstances and situations where we knew that we could not get ourselves out of it, but you, you stood there. You taught us in your word that when we come one to another for prayer, you taught us to pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And giving us this day our daily bread, forgiving our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation for all, that the power of the glory forever and ever. Father, we understand that there are people, there are family members that we may have that we have not talked to in years. We ask that today be a day that you break that yoke, break that evil yoke of relatives. May the words that come out of my mouth, O oh God, express the goodness in my heart. As I said, there are those of us who will sit who have not spoken to family members. Master, we ask in your holy name, bind that spirit up. Bind it up today and cast it down. 
Father, we ask for power because we know that through the unselfishness act of going to the cross, you have embedded in us glory and power through your grace and your mercy. We now have power that we may be able to go up against the woes of the enemy and be able to stand victoriously in your name. Father, we thank you, O God, for there is nothing that we cannot do without you. There is nothing that we can do on our own. It is you, Father, who is our light. It is you who has set that path that we need to go down. It is you that when the time come, you call us home. As you sit on the right hand of the Father, welcome us and enter us into your loving joy. So we thank you today, O oh God, for you have showed us the way. You have showed us direction. You have showed us how we can come one to another, enter into the throne room where you sit, and we can receive you in Jesus' most precious and beloved name. Father, we, let us understand that this is not a time of Easter egg hunting, and this is not a time of, of walking around with palms, and this is not, these are symbols. It is not you. It's symbols. Allow your people today to go out and understand that they need to come and draw near unto you. Let, the, let, let this be like a ripple a ripple effect that even though something has dropped in their life may be small as a word, a letter, a number, or a song. Magnify itself and stretch out throughout the world. Allow a change to come in someone's life today. Allow a resurrection to come in a life today. Allow, allow someone to put down that old man and rise again with joy, with hope, with peace, with understanding, with hope. That's what it is. We ask, oh God, what is it that people give their life for a false and fake God that has yet to show them anything? And here you are sitting on the throne continuously every single day, blessing your people. Allow them to find a revelation, a revelation in you, a change, a difference. We ask these things in prayer. We know that you, almighty God, <laughs> we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. How many of you have got your Easter plan all set? Hold on for one second. Mm. How many of you got your Easter plan all set and all situated and you're ready to go and, and you're, you're all fired up? How many of these churches that you go to today and you see them and they're having their little Easter egg hunts and they're having their little uh, um, resurrection um, Sunday services? I, you know, I, I think it all good. I think it all good because I, I, we have to get the message out to people that God's not dead. He's still alive. And that he sits on the throne, the right hand of the Father, preparing a place for you. For you. So you may be able to come unto him. And you may be able to accept Jesus Christ. I know you can. I know, I know what's in store for you when you do. I know what's available for you when you, when you just cash in your chips in God. He said, he says, try me and see if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour out that blessing, that blessing. It's not a whole lot of blessings. It's that one blessing he wants to give you that you will not have room enough to receive it. <laughs> 
could you imagine how it feels to continuously have blessings just coming your way, just coming your way, coming your way over and over and over and over again and, and never yet um, uh, diminish of everything that you have received. I'm, I'm looking at, um, I'm looking at, uh, let's, let's, Mm. Um, dear Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you give me a word that I can share with my people today. Share with your your family. Share with my brothers. Share with my sisters today. Oh, allow me a word. Allow me to be able to read and receive understanding, direction, and guidance. And if so, correction. Open up your word, oh God. You know, I, I like I like being here. You know, I I like uh, sharing with you. I I like um, um, bringing you the word. Uh, I I like sharing you what God puts on me to share with you. I want to go to Isaiah fifty nine. Isaiah fifty nine. Now we just want to read a little bit, okay? Now you read with me because there's no guarantee I'm reading everything correctly. I'm reading also out of a paraphrased Bible. So I, as I said, I had people who say, Bishop, that's, that's not a whole, it's a, it is a holy Bible. Anything that can help us, and, and, and I, I, I bounce back and refer to different words, different Bibles, because I want you to get a clear understanding of what God is saying. And sometimes we need, even though we may have instructions given to us, in this world of technicalities, in the world of technologies, and, and in this world of all of this um, um rapid quick movement sometimes we get caught in the translation and the in the chain in the movement of things we get caught up and it's important that we call on the word of god to help get us through and get us in the right on the right footing so that's what a life application bible many of you sit here and you talk and you ask questions you says look it bishop he's reading a paraphrased bible but you're sitting there with a life application bible and the life application Bible that you're reading is not your life application. <laughs> it's not your life revelation. It's someone else who sat and said, this is what we believe that is being taught. You're listening to and you're going through concordance. Concordance is not the Holy Bible. Life application, if you're reading, if you're reading a life application Bible, you're reading the St. The, you know, the, the James you're reading that, the New King James, you're reading that, and you're taking what you read out of the King James, and you're looking for a life application so you can apply it to your life, you're doing no better than just reading what someone else has told you. You should act. So with that being said, and also, never mind the, 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 the Dake, the Dake Bible. There's some people who, I, I, I have all of them. There's some people who have a date Bible. And I may I may uh, uh, go to the date Bible just to get a clear understanding because I'm an intelligent man who asked the Holy Spirit to open up his, his treasure trove of, of all the goodness that's in him and all the things that God... Because I said that my people perish for the lack of knowledge. What is that knowledge? Knowing him. That's why we perish. Because we don't know him. We don't know him. Now, I've been, t I've been a professor and teacher. I have a Ph.D. in Christian education and, and um, um, Christian college um, administration. And, and I try my best to get, I, I can still be taught. See, people believe that you, you, you got a Ph.D., He must be highly into it means that I could be taught something. That's what that's what a Ph.D. means. When you have a doctor, that doesn't mean that you've got all the answers. It means that with that doctorate's degree, it means you have the capability. To learn <laughs> that you will read a book, that you will read a book and write a paper. 
You, I'll say this, look, because you do your dissertation. I had to do my dissertation. So not only that, you could read a book and you can write a paper. And, and it's a pretty big paper. It took me a four-year, pretty much a four-year study. But, but, but getting away from me, I, I don't want to get caught on me. Uh, this, is not, this is not about me. It's about you. It's about what you know and what, what you learn about, about God. <laughs> okay? So let's go to the Word. Uh, I was talking about Isaiah 59. And I'm going to read what Isaiah 59, starting with one sentence. It says that, now listen now, the Lord isn't too weak to save you. And he isn't getting deaf. He can hear you when you call, but the trouble is that your sins have cut you off from God because the sin he has turned his face away from you and will not listen anymore. For your hands are those of murderers, and your fingers are filthy with sin. You lie and grumble and oppose the good. No one cares about being fair and true. Your lawsuits are based on lies. You spend your time plotting evil deeds and doing them. You send your you know you spend your time and energy in spending evil plans which end up in deadly results or deadly actions. You cheat and shortchange everybody. Everything you do is filled with sin. Violence is your trademark. Your feet run to do evil and rush to murder. Your thoughts are only of sinning. And wherever you go, you leave behind a trail of misery and death. You don't know what true peace is, nor what it means to be just and good. You continuously do wrong, and those who follow you won't experience any peace either. It has become, or because of all the evil that you aren't finding God's blessing. I'll say it again. It is because of this evil that you aren't finding God's blessing. That's why he doesn't punish those who endure him. No wonder you are in the darkness when you expect light. No wonder you are walking in gloom. No wonder you grope like blind men and stumble along the broad daylight. You, even at brightness, moon time, as though it was in the dark night. No wonder you are like corpse when compared with vigorous young men. You roam like hungry bears. You moan with mournful cries like doves. You look for God to keep you, but he doesn't. He has turned away for your sins keep piling up or piling excuse me piling up before the righteous god and testifying against you your works this is for your sins 
keep piling up before the righteous God and testifies against you. May God have a blessing to the reading of Isaiah 59, 1 to 12. And um, out of the pair, out of the Holy Bible, the paraphrased version, may God bless the word. Um, Change from your wicked ways. Change from your wicked ways. Now, I'm not going to be able, I'm looking at the time. We, we've been already in this a half hour, and uh, I try to keep this show within a half hour period, within an hour period. Um, today is a, a, uh, a day of, of um, I'm, it is a day of celebration, but it's also a day of reflection reflecting on what God has done, what Jesus has done. God sent his only begotten son. He said he, though he loved the world, he sent his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Um, uh, John three and 16. And so what we do is, is that we are happy for, we know that we serve a God that's a living God. He is resurrected and we are in peace and in joy because we serve a, a living God. And he has not only lived, but he left us a living manual on how we can uh, enter into him, enter into his joy, be a part of what, what he is all about. And that is promising the promise and we often talk about the promise, and that is we receive eternal life given to us through God, told to us through his son. Now, his son said that when he came here, those things that he said and those things that he do is not of him, but of his father who sent him. So everything that we watch him experience on the cross is not something that he has done uh, for his own behalf, but for you and for me, that we may be saved. That we may be saved. So we thank God for his son, Jesus Christ. And through Jesus Christ, he bared the sin of the world. And we have now been changed. Now, when we look at this word, this word says that from uh, change from your wicked ways. How many people out here today that believe that they're not even living a wicked life? There are some people who are sitting in the church today that think that, though, that even though they said, I've given my life to God, I'm walking in the way, and I'm trying to lead others in the way. Because, see, my, my, my communication is always um, talking to the preachers because it, it's true, the mandate given to me and this ministry is get the loss to the cross at any cost. <laughs> I like that, any cost, but get the loss to the cross. That's what our, that's what the mandate stands for. That's what God has placed in the ministry here of the Fountain Life Outreach Ministry is to get God's people to the cross. And so now there's a series of ministers and pastors and preachers and bishops and that, that are all under the same um, drive, this motivation. Now, many of them will go on their own motivation, and that's good because there are many of us and have many different ways that we need to help get one another saved because the time is drawing and drawing nigh. The time is coming. It's going to take uh, not what I receive as a reward is how many people I can get to the cross. He's already gave me a number. You got a number. Everyone who has out here who has received the walk in the light has a number given to him. So that means that we can't be jealous of each other's number. I can't be jealous of how many people T.D. Jake brings to the throne. I mean, they're, 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 they're his. I can't be upset and mad and, and, and a player hater against how many that Creflo Dollar brings to 
the throne. That's his number. That's what God has given him. That's the vision that he received is to get the loss to the cross at any cost. So regardless to what we may believe, regardless to what we, we fight with one another, men and women of God, men and women of the, of the, the pulpiteers of the, of the, of the, um, of the uh, uh, altar, we fight and argue with one another. And, you know, if, as we read in what was coming up in, um, what did we read the other day? We read um, uh, Amos, where he said that the horn, the horn, will be broken off the altar. Do you know what that means, the horn? The blessing. The horn. A horn is, uh, some may look at the horn as being a, a, a goat horn. I mean, I, I got I got a chauffeur out right here. Uh, sometimes we think that that's, that's the horn. No, the horn that he's talking about is when you see on Thanksgiving, you see this 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 basket horn is shaped in a the big outside and it comes up and the, you know that and it has the fruits and the bread and the vegetables and the harvest just spilling out of it i remember uh i went to a church um oh oh it was a church in uh Suffield Connecticut and i i went to that i can't remember the name of the church I, I was welcomed there, and and I I saw this. They had a horn, a basket. This thing must have been if if it was if it was it had to been about ten feet, ten feet. It was big. I don't know who would have made this thing, but they had all sorts of fruits and vegetable that was. Um, running out of it you know what I mean it was just spewing out of it now it was all still it, it's, it was a it was a prop that they made and this prop had the horn sitting on the altar and it was open and then they had all these fruits and vegetables that were just spilling out and it spilled out all on the 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 podium where the pastor was at and all that Oh, it was a it was a it was a beautiful sight because if you understand what it meant that this was the harvest, this was the gathering that they have done, and this is what they have laid out for God. That's what it means by the horn. The horn is a blessing. The horn is where the oil would be in, and the oil is poured on the head of 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 David, the horn and, and Aaron as the oil dripped down the beard and the garment of, of um, Aaron. And anyone that is anointed is anointed by the horn. And when you say that the horn broke off the altar, that means any good thing that can happen in that ministry, any good thing that can happen on that pool, in that pulpit, any good thing that can happen in that church, any good thing, that can happen has now been compromised. The horn has broken off. This is what we read um, yesterday. No, was it yesterday? The day before yesterday? I think it was the day before yesterday. We read it in our text in Amos. And Amos was talking about the horn of the altar being broke. This happens. The horn of the altar breaks because the church is no longer following God. If we read it, remember what we read in our text that he says that um, how can two walk together unless they be in agreement? He said, uh, paraphrasing, how can I walk with you when you are holding on to your sin? God is not going to assemble himself around you as long as you are uh, 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 adhered to sin. You have to change. Amos 3. A, uh, you know, we, we can turn to it real briefly. Amos, turn to Amos, um, Amos 3. Is where we got our text from. Uh, I got to... Uh, Turn to Amos 3, okay? And um, 
um, the text that I look at, Amos 3, um, let's look at 2. 2 says, of all the people on the earth, I have chosen you alone. God has chosen you to do his work. Now, I, you know, I'm not thinking about this preacher, that preacher, that preacher, that preacher. See, what we need to do is stop thinking about what they got and what they have been assigned to do. And I read this word as God's talking to me personally. Because, see, he's not always going to give me a revelation to give to you. He's going to give me a revelation to improve me. Let's say that again. He's not going to always give me a revelation to do for you or give you or show you, but he's always going to give me a revelation to improve me first. And once I'm uh, improved because I held fast and I received the revelation, then now I can share it with you or keep it within my heart to make me a better person, to strengthen me as a person. So I'm able to step up, and show you, let's say, the Lord and what God is telling me to say, whether it be to you or to any 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 listener, any listener. That's why it's important to have this radio station open because see, the the person who is sitting in, in in my presence may not be able to get this good revelation, but there may be someone in Germany, there may be someone in Budapest, there may be someone there that may receive this word. <laughs> So what we want to do is have an open ear. You get what I'm saying? Have an open ear. And some things are meant to stay within and some things are meant to, to share with others. Not everybody's going to receive everything you say. Now, now I'm talking to the preachers. I'm talking to preachers. So let's look at this. It says, uh, and 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 you know you know how we write it in our Bible. My um, the Holy Spirit said when the Holy Spirit brought me to this, He says, "I don't agree with you." That's what number three is actually saying. I don't agree with you. It says, "That is, I must punish you the more for all your sins." Here it goes. It says, "For how can we walk together?" with your sins between us. How can me and you travel together down the road, calling ourselves buddies, calling ourselves friends? We remember what Jesus, he said that he, 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 that he was a friend that he gave his life. Jesus called us friends. But how can I walk with Jesus? How can I walk with him when there's this sin between us? Because he is him who has done no sin, took on my sin to the cross, gave his life for my sins. So he's already said, son, the ransom has been paid. You are all right now. You see, that's the Jesus that we serve. That's the God we serve in Jesus. Son, everything is okay. I've paid the ransom. I paid the price. You are free to go. Because he who is free is free indeed. So you're free. He has paid the ransom. He has paid the strong man. He has taken care of all the debt that you owe. Now, you say, oh, that I, I owe my this, my that. No, 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 I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about death because that was what the, the wages of sin is. Come on, preacher, is death. So what Jesus did, he paid that price. He went to the cross. He paid that price for your sin. So you are no longer governed under sin. And since the ransom has been paid, you are free to be. You are free. The price has already been paid. So why are we continuously going out here, getting up in bondage again? Throwing, it's like, you know, throwing a price tag back on yourself every time you turn around. Because the wages of sin is death. 
So you keep going into this death when Jesus has already paid the price. Why? Why? Now, as it says right here, it says that it says, for how can we walk together with your sins? He didn't say his sins. <laughs> he said, how can we walk together with your sins continuously between us? People, receive, receive, receive. How can you be saved? You have to first confess. First confess. Number two, you got to accept it. Accept Jesus Christ, and you gotta, you gotta, you have to receive it. You have to receive that Jesus Christ is Lord, and that He has given up His His life, so that you may have. And you have to believe that He He is real, and then receive whatsoever you ask for. Some people have to. I gotta wait, and I gotta hope that what I am is in the will of God. And listen. If you are doing it in love, if you're in, if you're doing what you're doing in love and it's not of sin, and you accept the price paid for your sins, and you walk in the righteousness of God, continuing to do well with God, why are you not in the will of God? Why are you not in the will of God? Now, you know, you know, I don't need to try to uh, um, um, uh, get out here and, and, and start scaring you. Well, you better do this or you're going to die, do this, da, da, da. No. You know that, the, that the, the wages of sin is death. You know that. And you know that if you do not change from your wicked ways, that's what we that's what we were reading here. It says, um, change from your wicked ways. The things that you're doing out here, this is a sinful way. This, th- these are your sinful ways. And there's stuff that you need to stop. There's stuff you need to bind up. And there's stuff that you need to cast it down and receive Jesus Christ this very day. You can do it. No longer do you have to uh, walk with a, with a price on your head. Because literally when we carry sin, when we're walking with sin, we're walking with a price tag on our head. When there was no, when the price has already been paid, when, when you, you know, when you go to the grocers, when you go to the grocers, you go there and you look for different um, items to bring home for for, for food. Now, could you imagine? No. And, and how many people have done that? You've gone in the supermarket and they had the little lady sitting there and she has, you know, sausage. <laughs> I know people who'll go in the supermarket and make dinner. <laughs> Out of just samples, they go for lunch. You know, and I've seen people do that. I, You know, believe me, not the homeless. I'm talking about gainfully employed people <laughs> who, who have lunch at the supermarket during the time that the samplers are there and they're sampling this and they're sampling, sampling that and they're eating this food, sampling, sampling, sampling to where they can walk away out of that um, supermarket full because they've had their lunch. <laughs> they've had their, they have their lunch right there at the supermarket. I, I, none of you guys are listening to me. You don't do that. I know that. I know that you guys don't do that, but <laughs> there are people who do. There, there are people who um, they, they they do just that. They get up and they they go to <laughs> the price has been paid. I'm I'm not gonna drift off on that. The price has been paid. Jesus paid the price for your sin that you could not pay. Okay, let's, let's go back there. Jesus. Pay the price of your sins 
that you couldn't pay. Could you have gone on the cross? No. No. Number one, you have to be righteous. Number one, you have to be sinless. And uh, looking at (laughs) y'all, there's not a one of you sinless, okay? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Not one, all. So when you walk out here with this mindset, and and it's not you, I know, I know, it's not, it's not the people here, but when you walk out of here, Mister Super, Mister and Mrs. Super Preacher, and you believe that you have not committed any sin, and that you live a wholesome, royal, sinless life. And the world revolves around you and you, you're keeping it real. You are still sinning. There are things in your life that's not right. You know that. You know that. And you need to fix it. Let's stop. Let, let's call it what it is. And let's stop doing this thing of, well, I'm, I'm going to cast it into the sea. God cast my sins into the sea of forgetfulness and he's never going to remember. You're going to pay a cost for your sin. If you are out here doing God's people wrong, you, you know, Jesus was very compassionate about his people. He asked John, he says, I mean, excuse me, Peter, he said, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. If you love God, you would love to feed his people. If you have a love affair for God, you have no problem wanting to fulfill the great commission that God has put in you to feed his people, to give his people open eye, to give his people the the wisdom and the knowledge to quicken them that they may be able to go out and do good things in their lives according to God's word and God's will. Or, you know, he puts that spirit of joy and that spirit of peace in you that you may be able to go and teach and show and open, your, you know, open the way for other people. So there's things that you need to do. First thing you need to do, you need to stop what you're involved in if it's not of God. Stop thinking that everything that you do is all right and it's in the is in the blessings of God because see we do come short you are coming short you are so what you need to do is this let's stop let's stop just as he told that woman that woman was being was preparing to be stoned and as she was preparing to be stoned Jesus told that woman first he after his uh, confronting the men he told he said go and sin no more Go and sin no more. That's number one. Conve- uh, um, confess your sin. Now, I'm not telling you to go out here and tell everybody, tell the church. There's certain things that you need to keep to yourself. If it's between you and God, repent to God. You don't have to repent to man. Repent to God for your evil ways, for your sins that you have committed, for the things that you have come short. Right now, right now, you can repent. Well, how do I, how do I repent? This is what you say. Dear Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know that I have come short of your divine glory. I know I've missed the mark. And right now, I ask that you forgive me. I repent of my sin. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. And through him, I am free of the bondage. So like I said, first thing is you need to confess you are a sinner. The next thing, believe. You need to believe. You need to believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins. You need to believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins. 
okay? And you need to receive. Because of that, what he has done on the cross, he is now giving you a precious gift. Receive the gift. That precious gift, eternal life, peace, joy. These are the gifts that he has for you. That he is looking to give to you. That you are a rightful heir of these things. If you give your life to Christ, you are an heir of the throne. Okay? Give. Stop right now. And confess. I'll, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, dear Heavenly Father, I've been a sinner. I want you to pray this with me. I've been a sinner. I've done things in my life that I'm not pleased with. I've done things in my life that I'm not happy with. I've treated people in ways that was despicable. I've lied and I've cheated. And Father, only you know to the depth that I have sunk in my life. The sins that I have committed, only you know. Master, I repent this very minute, this very moment right now. I repent from my sins and I ask in your holy name, for your forgiveness. I ask for your forgiveness. I know that you send your son and that he has given his life on the cross for my behalf. I know that he has paid the wage for my sin. For my sin, the wages was death. I know that I have lived a rough and a um, and a, a a vicious life, and today I want to give my life to you. Father, I believe that Jesus sits at the throne this very minute, waiting for me. So I give my, my life at this time for you. I lay my life on the line and I am here to serve you. You need to believe. I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe that Jesus is your son, your only begotten son. I believe. believe and now I receive it I receive the gift of eternal life I receive the gift freely given to me by your son who died on Calvary's cross by giving his life for me I am now the ransom has been paid and I am set Free. I'm a new person. I'm a new creature. I receive that I am set free and I am renewed. I'm a new person. I'm not that same person anymore now. I accept you. I confess to you. I repent for what I've done. And I receive my new life. And I'm going to show that in my act today. I'm going to show that on how I go out and I behave today. Father, I'm going to look for a church. I'm going to join. And I'm going to have other saints teach me how to be your true servant. I thank you 
for all that you have done. I thank you for for your gift. I thank you for the selfishness that you have performed on the cross on my behalf. I thank you. And I ask that you receive me as I come before your throne. I repent. I'm going to a school. I'm going to go somewhere where I can learn more and more about you. I don't want to leave my soul in hell. People, if you have prayed that prayer with me, I want you to give me a call. Give me a call. Now, during the telecast here, uh, we, we're open uh, at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time. And you can call this radio station Monday through Friday. Monday through Fridays. Uh, and you can share with anyone here at this radio station. And we will pray with you. We will take the time to stop whatever we're doing because this is the most important thing. This is what we are called to do. This is the mandate given to us that we may get you in the rightness with God. See, you you can get in the rightness with God and you do not have to blow yourself up in an airport. You can get close to God. There may be somebody who was involved with that stuff. They may, you may be listening to me right now and someone may have be, bewitched you in believing that you must kill yourself to kill other people. You have been bewitched. You need to come out of that. You need to come out of that. If you're looking at this kind of a lifestyle, glorifying it and building it up to be the, the way to be, you are lost. We'll have more, more, more um, preaching on it. I have more preachers. We're going to talk about this and we're going to let it out because we feel that it's just going to get worse. They've already said that there are 400, if not 4,000, I believe they can't even get the numbers right. It's not 40. Someone said, well, I think it's 40. No, they have said that there's over 400 cells that are going out throughout the world come, trying to get into America to come and kill innocent people. So today is the day. You don't know where you'll be at. Today is the day that you need to give your life to Christ. And we need to be as men and women of God, preachers of the gospel. We need to be and and stop playing this radio TV game. We need to put down these toys and do the work that God has charged us to do. Let's stop it, people. He said in his word, I can't walk with you as long as you walk in sin. I cannot walk with you as long as you walk in sin. He, what did Jesus say? We'll go right back to Amos again. Let's read that. It says that, for how can we walk together with your sins between us? You have been given a mandate. You have been given a responsibility. You have been given a call. See, when you receive an assignment... When you receive an assignment from God, you're given accountability. And in your accountability, there is responsibilities. You have particular responsibilities to do the work mandated by you, by God, to you to do what he needs to get done. And that's not sit here and play with scriptures and play with work and play a whole bunch of games and and want to be the next flavor of the month in the church world. In the church world. The gates of hell are 
open and it's just getting open wider and wider and the demons are coming out and they're coming out for you. I pray that you listen. I pray that we are available for you and that somebody now I'm going to preach, I'm going to pray, I'm going to talk as long as I can, as much as I can, and the tapes are going to go out, and the, and the, the speaking is going to go out, and I'm going to speak, and, and, and I know we have preachers who are here listening to what they're saying. I monitor much of what they say, and they have a responsibility to get the gospel out, not only the gospel, but to get you to the cross. That is their main objective is to get you saved, get you closer to God. Now you can listen to this radio station as much and as often as you want to. You can call us. The numbers are 413-315-8992 or 413-315-8993. Tell somebody else when you walk away and the radio is off, uh, the, the preaching is done. I want you to tell somebody else. I want you to call somebody else. I want you to let someone else know, listen, th- there's some righteousness on the radio. There's not all that um, uh, super pimping. Pimping. Soul pimping. No. There's some people who really care about my soul. There's some people who really care about me. And they bring the word of God to me. So with that being said, we're easing up on, uh, I know I went over, (laughs) but you know, this is important. Your salvation is important. This is not something you can just take lightly. There are people, as I said again, listen to me, people. There are those who are willing to go to hell and drag you with them. They're willing to go to hell and drag you with them. They're blowing. These are young men, 29 year old men, 29 years old. When I was 29 years old, all I wanted to do was drive around and meet girls. These people are looking for uh, strategically looking for places that they can kill as many Americans as. They were even talking about hitting nuclear um, reactors. Nuclear reactors. There's an insane mind that's running around this country now. It's called demonic demons. And it's not the people. They're just a host carrying this demonic spirit that wants to come in you and wants to come at you, want to destroy you. If you're righteous, they want to take you to hell. If you're a sinner, they want you to join up with them. You need to understand. This is not of God. You serve a mighty God. What is his name? I am. I am not a is I S I S is 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 not a is is you serve the great I am okay so with that being said let us pray dear merciful Savior in the name of Jesus we thank you for this message that was given to us today master we I I Thank you for touching me and utilizing me as your speaker today. Father, I pray that the word that came out of my mouth are receivable in your sight. And I bless each and every one of your people that they may be able to to understand and be ready to deal with the changes of time that is coming upon us. Father, let us see the vision and let us understand that you are calling soldiers now. You're not calling in weakening, weak weaklings. You are training up and bringing up soldiers. And the first thing these soldiers need to do is to receive you and be in prayer. That's the very first thing. You, they need to be prayed up. They need to know you. And then begin the battle. We know that the battle is going to come and it's going to come to our front door. 
We're not talking out of, out of fear, but readiness for the fight. So we ask in your holy name that you continue lifting us up. Oh, bless us, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, please bless us in the name of Jesus. Ready us for the battle that we may be victorious in the war. You have showed yourself. You are the great I am. That I am. We give you the power. We give you the glory. Forever and ever. I want you to take this with me. Each and every one of you. I want you to take this. And I'm going to leave this with you. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with joy because of you. May he be gracious to you and show his face and favor upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' most precious name, I pray. Amen. Get yourself into a church. We ask that you ask to be, uh, uh, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with getting involved with a church and finding yourself someone that you can, uh, men- that can mentor you in the word. Feel free to get in touch with us here at 24.7 WCUW. Our phone numbers are 413-315-8992 or 413-315-8993. Catch us on the web. Uh, go to our website at wcuw.net. Or if not, go listen, tweet us. We're on Twitter. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. We're everywhere you need to be. We just ask that you get in touch with us. Get in touch with us right away. There's work that needs to be done. I'm so blessed to have you a part of us. The things are changing here, and you are in the middle of a blessing favor. <laughs> okay? So with that being said, we're going to ask that you just continue doing the work and doing the will of God. In Jesus' most precious name, amen. Until tomorrow, God bless.